Hey guys, Scott from Fry Props here, and today we're going to be taking a look at using a CO2 tank to power a pneumatic cylinder. If you're familiar with pneumatic systems in general, you might know that usually you would be using an air compressor to provide the pressurized air that actuates the cylinder. An air compressor is essentially a tank with a motor on it which uh, pressurizes air, stores it in the tank, and then uh, the solenoid here controls that flow of air to a cylinder like this one. But what if you want to use a pneumatic in a place where you don't have access to a uh, air compressor that's plugged in all the time? What if you want to do a mobile application or you want to do this somewhere like in a field on a farm where you can't run a huge long air line all the way from your air compressor out to the middle of the field? Well that's where using something like a CO2 tank comes in. If you were to just use standard compressed air in a tank like this to actuate a cylinder, it would run out very quickly. That's because every time this cylinder actuates, the entire volume of air inside the cylinder is pushed out through the exhaust ports here on the solenoid. Now standard compressed air actuating like that, even though there's a fairly small volume in here, will run out very quickly. The advantage of using CO2 is that it's compressed at a much higher PSI than standard air. A CO2 tank like this is compressed in excess of 800 PSI. That means that you can get many more actuations off a CO2 tank like this than you could off of a tank a similar size filled with standard compressed air, which might only be compressed up to 120, 150 PSI. So let's take a look at the overall setup we have here. On the right is our CO2 tank. Uh, we filled this with five ounces of CO2, so it's about a quarter of the way full. You can get these filled at any paintball supply uh, company or a paintball range. Um, they can fill it for you. If you're really using a lot, you can get a large CO2 cylinder, and there's a uh, fill device that you can use to fill these small tanks from the large cylinder. So let's take a look at the regulator. This is very important again because this tank is compressed at over 800 PSI. If we were to feed that pressure directly into the valve or the cylinder, it would damage them. They're not rated to handle that high of a PSI. That's why we need a regulator so we can dial down that PSI to something that will work with our pneumatic system. Right now we currently have it set to 30 PSI. To adjust the PSI, we use this nut and bolt here at the top. We can loosen the nut and then use a screwdriver to adjust the bolt on the top. Loosening it will lower the PSI. See it drop there. Tightening it will raise it back up. We're going to keep it right at about 30 for this demo. Once you have it set where you like, you can come in again with the wrench and tighten that bolt, which will keep it set to the pressure you want. The CO2 flows out of the tank here. This lever allows you to shut the flow on and off. Right now it's on. If you put the lever in the up position, that turns it off. You want to make sure that lever is in the off position when you install your regulator or you're going to get CO2 blasting out of whatever PSI you have set here on the regulator. We'll go ahead and turn it on now so we can demo the system. Again, the CO2 is going to flow into the solenoid valve. We're going to use the Peekaboo 1 to turn the solenoid valve on and off, which will make the cylinder actuate in and out. To record a sequence, I'm just going to tap record, tap out my sequence on the green button here, and then tap record again to save. So that sequence is now saved in the Peekaboo 1. You can see there that as the solenoid opened and closed, the cylinder extended and retracted. Probably a little bit more forceful than what we need. So um, I'm going to dial the pressure down a little bit and I'm going to set this to loop and we're just going to let the camera roll and we're going to see how long this will go um, before the CO2 runs out. Alright, so I've set the PSI on the CO2 tank to 20. I've clamped the door pounder here uh, down to the table so that it won't walk away on us. And I'm going to enter a program that consists of a little bit of animation, then about 10 seconds of rest. All right, so now we have a program that has two knocks and then 10 seconds of rest. I'm now going to power down the controller. And I'm going to do what's called looping the trigger input. I'm going to install a wire that goes from the negative of the trigger terminal over to the in. That's going to cause this controller to repeatedly trigger over and over again as long as it's powered up. All right, so we have our trigger input on our controller looped here. I can go ahead and power it up. It's going to start playing our scene. We're just going to let it go and see how long it runs. Alright, so that is a quick look at using a CO2 tank to run a pneumatic cylinder. If you have any questions, of course, leave a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at Thanks!